Hello and welcome back to another video. We're actually coming to you at the end of a weekend away uh, where we've done uh, quite a few different projects and we're quite happy with how the weekend's gone. First of all we got the foundations in, level and squared and we've also managed to get through and, and build the base of the cabin as well and we had an end to the uh, Leroy Milan saga. As you can tell by my face it was a good ending to that story but we'll come back to that later. So to watch us get started on the cabin, keep watching. And yes, I'm in the passenger seat. Katie's driving. We're Danny and Kate, and this is Paco. We recently bought 12 acres of land in the Spanish mountains. Follow the journey as two DIY novices with tons of enthusiasm, but not quite as much know-how. Renovate a small stone barn into the tiny house of our dreams and bring the land back into full production. But first, before we rip the roof off our brand new home, we need somewhere to stay. Welcome to the Cabin Build series. So we're going to start with an update about the strimmer. So for those who have been watching for a little while or have seen some of our previous videos, you will know that we are having one hell of a time with this strimmer. So it started back in December when we first bought it from Leroy Milan. We decided to take it back because it wasn't working after just using it for like half an hour or so. They took it away, said that they were going to fix it, there were a couple of little bits that were broken. It took months to come back. When it eventually came back, we brought it back up to the land, it still wasn't working. Um, so we took it back down again and said, look, I think there's something wrong with it. Maybe it's a malfunction or manufacturer's uh, error or something, but it's not working properly, so we'd like a refund. They said that their policy as a company is that you can't get a refund. Um, what they do is they sell you something that is from a manufacturer and therefore your purchase is from the manufacturer, not from them as a company. Ridiculous, don't know how that works, don't know how that's even legal, but whatever. So what we decided to do was uh, send it back to the manufacturer who is supposed to do an assessment and decide whether it is actually in fact broken or whether it's totally fine and whether they should give us a refund or not. We waited ages. We went into the store, we said, look, we haven't had a phone call, we've spoken to customer service, they said that we should just get a refund because this is ridiculous, it's taking so long. And they went away, tried to find it, and miraculously, it had turned up in the shop that morning, which is why we hadn't had a call. Yeah, right. The box was wrecked. There was no way that they were giving a kind of new one or anything. They were just trying to give the same one back, which was still broken. Um, so I said I wanted a refund. And then the store assistant said, oh, but we can't give a refund because it's over three months. Well, of course, I got a bit angry about that. So <laughs> I spoke to them in the best Spanish I could. So now we've walked away from the store. We don't have the streamer anymore and we have the 200 euros back in our pocket. So we're feeling pretty good about that, bit of a little victory there, and it means that we now have the money to put towards a better one. Thank you to loads of people who've been giving us recommendations, whether to get things like Still or the Husqvarna, or there's two or three different brands that are kind of popping up quite regularly as recommendations. So we're definitely gonna start looking into that. And if for nothing else in this video you decide to give us a like, do it for the fact that we managed to get the refund six months after buying this stupid machine. Now, let's get into the rest of the video.
it's delivery day! We're on our way down the mountain to go and meet the guy who's bringing the delivery of wood so that we can start on the cabin. You might be wondering why we haven't just bought a trailer or why we didn't rent a van and do this ourselves. Well, the reason is that we are looking for a trailer, um, but here you have to be careful about the conditions because used ones may not have paperwork um, and we definitely want paperwork because we're going to be using it on the road, not only on the land. So we're trying to look for a good deal and they're quite expensive. Um, it's not something that we can just go out and buy today. Um, it's going to take a little bit of research and, and preparation to find one that's good and within a good price range. But for now, where we bought the wood, they actually offered delivery for 20 euros. So we said, yeah, let's do it this time. We'll have the, um, we'll have the delivery and makes everything easy. So we went down to town yesterday and we got a load of uh, breeze blocks uh, from the local shop, the Big Mat. Brought those back in the um, in the car, which was interesting. Wasn't entirely sure whether the car would be okay with that, but everything was fine. And then what we're doing now is, last time we were here, we, we dug the holes um, and measured it out with a tape measure and some sticks. And now what we're doing is, is seeing are the holes okay in terms of putting two breeze blocks side by side. And then how good was our measuring between the holes to make sure everything's level. We were looking at the two breeze blocks um, side by side just now. So two a layer of two on this side and one on that side. And they look totally off, like just not level at all. And um, we decided to go down and get, get a piece of wood as you do. And actually, we, we didn't do a bad job. So this is why we are uh, so impressed that things are coming out level. Because when you stand here on the mountainside and look at it, it really doesn't look like it should be. <laughs> so we may have uh, celebrated a little bit too soon with how level everything was. So we've got these three here. When you measure between the two of them, like between uh, this one and this one, or this one and this one, they seem level. But then when you put forming a piece of wood on it there's about an inch gap at that side and if you flatten that side there's about an inch gap on this side between these two it's not level between those two it is level which means we need to raise this one which we've measured everything else around by one inch so we'll get cracking with that i guess it's about 7.30 and we've probably got about an hour left of kind of sunlight uh, or real sunlight before the sunset properly um, descends. So we're just going to kind of finish off these last ones that we're doing here. That one in the corner is almost done and then we've got this one in the middle to set. Um, and I think that'll be it for today. That's probably where we'll stop uh, before we come back tomorrow and start on the frame but it's looking in pretty good condition so far. I'm quite proud of where we've got to. Um, it was a bit more difficult than we thought with leveling everything, but it seems to be getting there, so. Leveling and squaring. Leveling and squaring. So yeah, let's try and get these ones done and then we can finish for the day and have a well-deserved shower and a beer because we both need it and we both want it. <laughs> We 
We're forecast for a little bit of rain this evening, so I'm just going to cover the wood that we already have here over at the site with a couple of tarpaulins just to keep them dry. We don't want the wood getting wet before we start um, actually building the cabin because as it dries out, that's when you can then get the kind of warping and uh, we definitely don't want that. So keep it nice and dry with a couple of tarps. There's just three of the pieces over on this side and then the other pieces we're putting in the underneath of the house and everything will be totally fine there and then tomorrow we can actually start cutting the other pieces to size bring them over here and start constructing the frame um, it's really exciting to see it all coming together and particularly because we're doing it all ourselves all by hand it's really rewarding and when you get to the end of a day where you've worked really hard for a few hours and really put in the graft and this is what you're left with you can finish the day feeling really proud of yourself and kind of excited about the day to come tomorrow so now that this is done I'm just going to put those tops on and then we're done for the day and we're going to have that well-deserved shower and beer that I mentioned earlier and have a good night's sleep. I'm sure that we're going to sleep really well because we're absolutely knackered from today's work and then fresh early start tomorrow and get on with the frame build. So we'll see you in the morning. Good morning. So we woke up today to a little bit of an unscheduled rain. Um, so we've took Paco out for a walk and um, had breakfast and things hoping for it to die down and it's not quite there yet but it looks like it will be um, going soon so we'll start cutting the wood in the in the underneath of the house and then we can start taking things across and uh, drilling pilots and things like that. So we ordered pieces of wood that were 3.9 meters in length but we actually received pieces which are 4.2 meters. Now that would be great if we could just extend the size of the cabin and make it a tiny bit bigger but we can't bank on the wood always being an extra 30 centimeters than what we expect so we're using the original measurements um, and what we'd originally planned to do was take the 390 and cut it in half and have 195 as the width piece um, so what we're going to do is measure in from each end 195 from this end and then 195 from the other end there and the off cut will be the piece in the middle we may be able to use that for something in the future i don't know we'll definitely keep it because it's useful to have things around but it means that we have to cut each piece of wood twice to end up with the two lengths um so it's a little bit extra work but worth doing because what we don't want to do is make it bigger and then next time we receive the next piece of wood realize that they are 390 and that everything's too short to fit uh, the measurements that we created. This is life in Spain, this is what happens, you don't always get what you expect so you have to deal with it. Now that the wood's all cut, we can take it over to the cabin site and get building.
half a frame done. A few problems with the twisted wood, but we're getting there and uh, supporting the tops and bottoms, and then we'll go through and put the middles in. Since the wood was actually 4.2 meters, what we've decided to do is keep the length here. And although this corner will actually become the corner of the cabin, we'll have a little outside step and then a step down to here. So we're not wasting anything, but we're keeping the size of the cabin the same. Back to Barcelona, but we've been stuck in traffic, so we're listening to Harry Potter, read by Stephen Fry, on Audible. Pretty good way to end the weekend, and I think we'll end the video there. We'll see you on the next one.